This video is a walkthrough of the NX series radios system settings. I'm going to show you all some tips and tricks along the way, so let's get started. There's two ways we can access the system setup. One is power on the radio. Push enter with our scroll wheel and scroll down to system setup. The second way is a shortcut I want to show you all. Let's turn the radio off. And here's how you do the shortcut. Hold in the scroll wheel, power the radio on, let go of the power button while still holding the scroll wheel, and we've done a shortcut to the system setup. Let's go through our system setup options. Model select. This allows you to change in between models. Add new model, add new bind and fly, and add new from template. Add new model is if you want to start with a clean slate. Add new bind and fly, you can go in the list and pick out the bind and fly model that you have and it will pre-configure your radio. Add new from template is if you want to make a template and have pre-configured voice commands, rates, and other things. While we're talking about model select, if you're on the main menu and let's say you have five airplanes configured in your radio and you're flying airplane number one and now you're going to go fly your other airplane, you can A, go into the system setup like we just did, scroll down, system setup, and then go to model select and you can change it that way. But I'm going to show you a shortcut that you can go straight to the model select. You have the cancel button and the back button. If you push both of those together, it takes you directly to the model select. So remember that shortcut when you're flying multiple planes. Let's go back into system setup. We have model name. So you can go in here and use the scroll wheel and change the model name. Aircraft type. Aircraft type is how you select the configuration for the type of aircraft that you're flying such as a four channel aircraft, a five channel aircraft, six channel aircraft, etc. If you're flying just a normal airplane that doesn't have flaps, you leave wing on normal. The most common aircraft type to use if it has flaps is one aileron, one flap. That means one channel goes to the ailerons and one channel goes to the flaps. The way you'll know this is and pretty much how most planes are set up if they have a servo on the left and the right for the aileron and left and right for the flap and they go to a Y splitter. So basically what that does is that takes two servos plugs it into one channel. That's when you have one aileron one flap. Also on that one thing I want to mention is when you have it set up for one aileron and one flap that'll enable the flap system menu. If you don't have it set up like that and you're trying to set up a plane with flaps you won't even see the flap system menu as an option to adjust in the function list. F mode setup is going to be your flap mode setup. You can do that for three different switches. That allows you to set three different flap modes. Basically if you want to set up for landing, takeoff, and acrobatic or 3D flying. You can have three different modes. Also, you can set trims for those different flight modes. So if it's going to be in different attitudes for the way you're flying, you know, you might have a different flight mode for takeoff than you do landing, and you may also trim the plane differently. You can set those up individually. Spoken flight mode is basically what it's going to say when you click on that flight mode. You can click test and that'll say whatever you have next to speak. So for example, F mode one, when you click test, it would say F mode one. Channel assign. This is gonna be your channel input config. This is what the switches are designed to do as a default. For example, gear is A, auxiliary two is B, aux three is R knob, and then, you know, down to channel 10. For example, gear is A, that's standard for the back left switch. The next menu is going to be RX port assignment. I really like this menu when setting up a plane if you have a receiver that doesn't have the name of the channel. For example, let's say you have an AR620 or a receiver that doesn't even have a case on the outside and you say, well, 
I don't know which channel's which. And instead of going in there and just plugging in different channels, you can come to this menu and you'll know that channel one is throttle. So we need to take our throttle lead, plug it into channel one on a receiver. We need to take our aileron lead, plug it into channel two on a receiver, and so on and so forth. Trim setup. This is going to be how far the trim adjustments move the control surface to trim the airplane. They're all set, set on five standard, so when you push this up or down, that's going to be the amount of adjustment allows. If you want it to not move the trim as much, you can turn that down. If you want more trim per every time you move the switch, then you can turn that up. Model utilities. This is to import, export, and to change different functions with the models in the screen that we were looking at earlier. Warnings. This is when you turn your radio on. This is the default setup, which is voice and vibration. When your throttle is over 30% and you turn your radio on, it's going to say high throttle and it's going to keep saying it and the radio is going to keep vibrating until you turn the throttle down. So you can set that up for different ways if you want your gear, if you want it to be a certain position up or down when you turn the radio on, you want your flaps to be in a certain position, you can set those for additional warnings. That way when you hook to your airplane, you have all of your switches and all your buttons in the correct position when, when you're going to start to fly. Telemetry, this is for when you have different sensors hooked up. We're not currently hooked up to a receiver or a telemetry receiver so they're going to say empty but you can go in here and set the different configurations you want such as battery voltage rpms things like that pre-flight setup whether you just started flying or you've been flying for a long time this is a great feature to have it's essentially a pre-flight checklist when you turn your radio on the pre-flight checklist comes up as you complete the steps on the checklist you can push next to the icon and it's going to allow you to basically mark that off your checklist so that way before you go up you make sure that you have done everything you need to do for a proper flight. Here's some of the options canopy attached, test controls, flat position so a bunch of different options in there that you can do. Next thing is frame rate. The default is 22 milliseconds you can put it on a hybrid mode of 11 milliseconds slash 22 milliseconds. If you have a high refresh rate servo, it's going to allow for a quicker response with those particular servos. Bind, that's going to be when you're binding your plane. Serial port, that's if you're using a crossfire setup that allows a serial port to be hooked up to the crossfire. And on the NX10, it allows it to power it as well. Trainer mode, you have wired, wireless, and trainer alerts. That's going to be where you got to set up for a buddy box, whether you're an instructor or a student, that allows two radios to connect together so you can learn to fly on an airplane together because you can change the controls from one to the other. You know, the, the instructor can take the plane up and then allow the student to fly, or the student can fly and the instructor can take over the airplane if they get in a bad situation. Center tone is going to be when you have the stick centered, it'll give you an audible tone. Sound utilities. This is so you can add and delete and customize different sounds. If there's something you want to add in there or when you're going through your sound list, if there's ones you don't use, you can remove them so your list is not as long. Palette utilities. This is so you can change the color scheme of the display. So if you don't want the normal spectrum white and orange, you can change it to other colors. System settings. You can put in username so when your radio is on it will have your username at the bottom so that way if you have multiple radios that are the same or if you have multiple radios you could label the radios to different one radio one radio two you know or something like that brightness this is how long your brightness is going to stay turned up i've got mine on 10 percent right now for the video purposes you can put this to 20 seconds after 20 seconds the brightness will turn off battery this has got a lithium ion. We've got a voltage alarm of 3.5. So when you get to 3.5, it's going to notify you that you need to charge your battery. Displays in English. Our voice functions are in English. Default palette spectrum. And then the inactive alarm. Inactive alarm is when the 
transmitter goes idle so if you happen to just get done flying the plane you unhook your battery and you forget to turn your controller off after 10 minutes it's going to say system idle and it's going to vibrate and it's going to tell you so you know you need to go over there and turn your radio off that you've left it on system sounds you can go in here and independently change the sounds that you hear the first one i always turn off is the roller so as i've went through this video you don't hear me rolling the wheel because it's been changed to inhibit you've got other sound functions that you can turn off as well volume controls you can change each volume control independently if you want your timer and your expired notification turned up higher warning turned up higher you can turn any of those up and they'll all be independently so you have different volume levels for different features Wi-Fi utilities we went over in the firmware setup USB settings this has one feature and this is going to be for controller mode if you want to use your NX series radio for a flight simulator such as real flight 9.5 you take your cord plug it in the back of the radio plug it into the USB of the computer and you go in here to mode and change it to game controller now it tells you that it'll disable the RF as well as I mentioned when this lights turned off that means your RF is not being transmitted from the controller now let me back up and show you all something let's say that you took your radio last night and you flew in the flight simulator and today you're going flying and you have no control to your radio if you leave that on at the bottom of the screen it will say simulator mode RF off and you can see even though we're at the main menu our light is still off next is USB settings this is to set your transmitter into controller mode controller mode allows you to use your NX series radio on a flight simulator so what you do is you plug the cable into the back of the radio and then you plug the other end which is USB into your computer you go into USB settings and you change this over to controller mode then your computer will recognize this as being used as a HID device and it also disables the RF because if you're flying on the simulator you don't need RF one thing to keep in mind when you do have game controller on when you go to the main menu the light will still be off and it'll say simulator mode RF off at the bottom so if you go out and fly the next day after you've been flying on the flight simulator you'll know that you need to go back into system setup and you need to go down to USB settings and inhibit from controller mode transfer SD card this is so you can import and export models into the radio so if you want to you know back them up on your computer you can export them or if you want to import some models from your other radio last thing is about and regulatory this is going to show you your serial number so you can register it with spectrum.com and then also it's going to show you your firmware version on the bottom center of the screen these models have Wi-Fi in them so you can do the firmware update registration and all that stuff via the radio and if you follow my first video which was the firmware update you'll understand the different features when we're going through that video that you can do in Wi-Fi utilities now we've completed our start to finish tutorial I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you on the next one